Y'all remember E.T.? Remember E.T. phone home? Then when I was 11, I went to the movies again. As you can see, I'm kind of tall. I went to see this movie called Scarface. And when I left that movie, I had a dream in my heart to be the largest drug dealer in the United States. How many of us know sometimes when we have a dream in our heart, even the devil can open a door to that dream? So I went to school, and when I went to school, a friend of mine called me into the bathroom, and he pulled out a bag of drugs, and he said, will you help me sell this? And I said, absolutely, this is what I want to do. And I started to sell drugs at age 11. I broke my mother's heart. My mother was a principal of a school. My father was the captain of correction at Rikers Island. So here I am, this child, that they had dreams of doing great things, was caught in the middle of the drug world. How many of us know some people that were caught in the middle? Say with me, caught in the middle. So by age 15, I became a drug boss, started to take over different territories. And at age 15, when I turned 16, the police had a great plan for me. I went walking down the street, and next thing you know, I was surrounded by detectives. And I just raised my hands. I said, you ain't got nothing on me. And they said, oh, really? They popped the trunk of a car, grabbed some drugs, walked up to me and said, beat this case daylight. That was my drug name. I was sent to Rikers Island. I spent a year on Rikers Island fighting almost every day, not for my manhood, just want to be clear, but because people wanted to beef with me, people wanted to fight me, They because I was, had this name called Daylight that was big on the streets. So I finally got out of jail. And any of y'all ever, you know, maybe you're not like me, but I said, I'm never going to get in trouble again. I got out of jail. Are the cops coming again? <laughs> All right, so I got out of jail, and I said, this time, I'm going to do the right thing. And I started searching for a job over and over again, like many young men I know. Go into jobs, nobody wanted to hire me. It was so bad that my mother had to pay an agency to get me a job, and the only job they were able to get was White Castle. Now, see... I don't know what you call White Castle, but in my neighborhood, we used to call them murder burgers. You know why? If you want to clean your system, you don't need x lax Just go and eat a couple of White Castle burgers, and I'm telling you, everything will be clear. And now, if you work for White Castle, please forgive me. I'm just telling a story. So I went to work for White Castle. And I remember like yesterday, I was working real hard, running up and turning over little, you know, burgers there, burning my hands, and then finally I got my check. I was so excited, I got a paycheck. And when I saw that check was $75, I quit. <laughs> when I was making $1,000 an hour out on the streets, I said, there ain't no way I could work for $75. But this time I thought I was smart. I said, like most drug dealers do, I'm not gonna be around it now, I'm not gonna touch it, I'm gonna have other people deal for me, and I'm gonna stay far away from it. I thought I was smart, I started to go and get my GED, and I was ready to just take over the states. So one day, I still had to report to parole. So I went to see my parole officer. She said, how's it going? I said, it's going fine. I said, here's my papers. I've been going to school. Everything is great. She said, I'll be right back. She walked out the room. Next minute, they walked in and slammed me on the table, and they handcuffed me. I was there. I said, what did I do? She said, for three months, you've been turning in dirty urine for cocaine. 
I said, I don't even use cocaine. But then I realized, like the TV show Breaking Bad, every time I was cooking up the drugs, it was going into my pores. I didn't even know I had pores. <laughs> so then I'm Thought sitting there rich. locked up, and I start to remember all the fights I had, all the beef that I had. One guy said if he ever saw me again, he was going to murder me. And I start to sit there, and I slip down the cuffs. I stepped over one cuff, stepped over the other cuff, and when she walked back in the room, she didn't notice. She went and she sat down, and she said to me, are you ready to go to jail? And I said, no, I'm not. And I started to run. And I'm running. I was on the fifth floor. I started to hit the staircase, diving down the steps. Boom, I would hit the bottom and roll. And I'm running for it as fast as I can. And this is when I had my first encounter with God. At the bottom of the stairs, it was always this big officer. When I went around the corner, he wasn't there. I yelled, praise God. And I'm running for my life. The cops chased me and I got away. I made it to the best place to go. Anytime you escape, I went to my girlfriend's house. That's the worst place to go. I get to my girlfriend's house and I made a phone call. I knew I had to get out of there because I knew the cops would eventually come there. So a guy came and I paid him $100 to take off my cuffs because my driver brought them to me. And then I asked him, I said, sir, I just got to ask, what do you do for a living? He pulled out a badge. He said, I'm a parole officer. <laughs> I looked at him. He looked at me. And you can see like the movie Usual Suspects. He was like, this is the guy. <laughs> but when he walked out my front door, I ran out the back door of my girlfriend's house Three minutes later, they came and they smashed the place in. But I was already gone. So I said to my girlfriend, I said, I, we got to come up with a plan. I said, I got to get out of New York City. They started having checkpoints all over looking for me. So they were stopping cars. And then I came up with the idea. You won't believe this. But the next day was Halloween. So I said to my girlfriend, this is what you're going to do. I said, I need you to get me a wig, get me a dress, give me some lipstick. And I said, I'm going to be the tallest girl in New York City. Nah, and I walked and they, I got nah. by the checkpoint. I went, let me just be clear, that's not my lifestyle. So I got on an Amtrak train with trucks strapped all over me. And I made it all the way down to North Carolina. When I got down to North Carolina, and I brought my New York City mind drug selling set there, I began to take over and dominate Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I finally reached my dream. That was to become a street god, the largest drug dealer of a city. But little did I know that that was gonna start a horrible drug war where 30 of my friends were murdered, killed. And then this heavy, kind of spirit came over me. I was feeling down. I was feeling hurt. I couldn't believe that so many lives were taken because of the mess I was in. This is what I was into. Every day, I thought of having pounds and pounds of marijuana. This was my dream. My other dream was to have nothing but kilos of cocaine. And I finally reached that goal that everything that sold in that city, one way or another, pointed back to me. But with all this money and all this power, I didn't feel joy, I didn't feel happiness, I felt pain and hurt and disgust. And then one day I came up with the idea, I said, I'm gonna drive back to New York City. And this drug dealer that was out there he started to date a woman that was a witch, a full-on witch. Now, people used to laugh and say, oh, she's not a witch. And they would go and try to hang out with her. All the girls that hung out with her ended up in a mental institution. This was real. So one day I got in the car and I'm driving to New York and I was sleeping in the back of the car. 
and I started to hear a horn go, and, and, and. My driver was driving. He said, yo, you know this person? I looked out the window, and it was that girl that was a witch driving like this, just looking at me all crazy. And I'm telling you, fear just begin to come all over me. Now the Bible tells us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So this reminded me that fear was of Satan. In fear, let that witchcraft come all over me. Next thing you know, I get to New York. I'm walking down the street, and that girl, that witch, popped out, grabbed me, did something to my hand, and the next thing you know, I completely lost my mind. I drove all the way back to North Carolina. I was in my body, but I could not control my body. My body was tearing up the house, looking for a gun to blow my own head off, but I'm inside my body trying to stop myself from killing myself. And I was out of control. Soon as one time I turned over something and the gun fell out and the demon that was in me reached for the gun and a friend of mine grabbed the gun. I got so angry, the spirit in me got so angry that I ran over the kitchen sink and just started smashing the dishes with my fist and I got cuts all over my hands. Blood was squirting everywhere and I was completely lost. Then some friends of mine came around. They said, yo, man, Daylight, we're going to help you. They said, come with us. We're going to help you. They said, we're going to take you to the club to get drunk. That's how friends wanted to help me. I go into the club. Next thing you know, I found myself on top of a young man smashing his skull into the floor. And then I went down like an animal and I bit his face, had blood all over me, and I spit out meat. This is how lost I was. This was how desperate I needed Jesus. So then I got back to my girlfriend's house and we all thought that possibly I killed him, but the guy lived. And my girlfriend started to say to me, are you sick? Are you crazy? How could you do this? And I just was out of my mind. I couldn't control myself. Then the next morning I get up and I'm sitting on my steps. Any of y'all ever heard of a movie called War Room? So in this movie, there was this one woman that had the power of prayer. In my story, it was three women like that. And these women said, we are gonna change our neighborhood. We're going to change our community. They said, we're going to go and we're going to pray for the largest drug dealer in our city. These three women walked up to me and they said, can we pray for you? And I looked at the, I'm all demon possessed looking at these ladies. Like, I'm like, what could these little ladies do? I said, why not? Yeah, you can pray for me. So then they said, okay. They said, come into the house. So I walked into the house and I'm looking at them and they're like, you know what? Come in here further. So I walk all the way into a room. Next thing you know, they started putting oil on their hands. So I'm looking, I'm like, what is this, a fish fry? <laughs> and then this little short lady said, come a little closer. She said, in the name of Jesus. She touched my head. I fell down to the floor. Boom! My body started spinning on the floor. And she was just calling out Jesus and the power of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And I bind and I pray the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks, I felt a presence of evil just leave out of my body. I mean, this presence left out of my body. I felt peace for the very first time. I remember I got up off the floor and I turned to that lady. I said, I said, I just want to pray to God. I said, can I go outside for a minute? 
She said, absolutely, you are set free. I said, thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? I remember I walked outside and I said, God, I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, God, I said, I'm never going to deal crack again, God. I said, I'm never going to deal crack again. I said, God, I'm just going to sell marijuana because it's natural. I was confused. So I went out and turned all my crack spots into weed spots. And I started making all this money. And I started to go to church. And then I learned about tithing, to give 10% to God. Every time I made 30 grand, I walked in the church, gave three grand. If I made 40,000, I walked in the church, gave 4,000. The pastor went into the pulpit. He said, church, we're going to build a building. We never saw money like this. And I'm turning around realizing, in retrospect, it was all the drug money that I was giving to the Lord. But the Bible does say, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. <laughs>